starring Humphrey Bogart in My Son John on the Cavalcade of America, sponsored by the DuPont Company, maker of better things for better living through chemistry. But first, here is Gaines Whitman. What's the value of that car of yours? Until you can buy a new car, it's almost priceless. So why not take steps now to protect your car against the freezing weather ahead? Have your dealer clean out the cooling system with DuPont Cooling System Cleanser and prevent radiator leaks with DuPont Cooling System Sealer. Then add a dependable DuPont antifreeze, Xerox, War Emergency Zero, or Five Star. Each gives you double protection against freezing and against rust. And Xerox is non-evaporating. All of these car protection products are examples of DuPont better things for better living through chemistry. Saturday was the proudest of all Navy days in the hearts and minds of the American people. And tonight, the Navy holds the cavalcade spotlight as we tell a story of one of her ships and crew. The ship is an underseas raider, the submarine USS Seawolf. And of her crew, one of the most important men is Buck Quaid, chief radio man. The DuPont Company presents My Son John, starring Humphrey Bogart as Buck Wade on the Cavalcade of America. Mr. Buck Quaid, Chief Radio Man, USS Seawolf, dear sir. I'm the mother of John Damon. You may wonder why I'm writing to you. Well, John tells me that in the awful days of the war, you were like a father to him. And since all boys at the important age of my son, John, need a strong example, I'm inclined to believe that if he has strength now and is a gentleman, that you too must be a strong man and a fine gentleman. From the bottom of my heart, Mr. Quaid, I thank you. This is Albert Damon, dear madam. Thanks for the compliment. I don't know about the gentleman part, but I still got strength enough to carry my own sea bag. Your son, John, is indeed a fine boy. I'll explain to you how he came to be a kind of a son to me during the war. Our submarine had just entered a certain Australian harbor, and we were ready for liberty. All ashore, it's going ashore. Here, come on, Zerg. Right with you, fellas. Hey, Buck, you going ashore or reach it? No, I'm stuck here until the new man shows up. Ah, it's tough stuff, Buck. Yeah, he'd probably come straggling in about five minutes before we sail again. Yeah, after a long cruise on a sub like this, a guy ought to have some sunshine. <laughs> you mean a kind that comes in bottles, don't ah. you? <laughs> yeah, that's important. And so is exercise. <laughs> you remember that fight in San Diego? <laughs> Do I? After we took on those Marines, they said I even looked better. Yeah, that, that bump on your nose gives you character. <laughs> no kidding, Buck. If you don't get the tank up, you know, you're going to be in bad shape. Wait a minute, stow it. Here comes a message. What's it say? See, the first word is congratulations. Well, we deserve it. Did we just get four Jap ships in one day? Now, this message is about some woman. Woman? Woo-hoo. That interests me already. What's it say? Congratulations. The launching took place this morning early. It's a beautiful destroyer pledged to the United States Navy. Sue had an easy time. Misses you dreadfully. Sue had an easy... Hey! What's the matter? Hey, Sue's the name of my wife. There's lots of females named Sue. Yeah, but... Even got a place named Sue. Sue Falls, South Dakota. Yeah, but... Yeah, but listen. Launching took place this morning early. Beautiful destroyer. Hey, wait a minute. It's mine. What's yours? It's a boy, Zerk. I've just become a father. Now I am going to celebrate. I got a son. Now, wait a minute, wait a minute. Look, you can't get boiled till your relief gets here. I can't operate no radio. I'm a father, Jerk. Don't call me Jerk. Since our third one arrived, I'm used to it, you know? Sit down, will you, Buck? You got a job on your hands, fella, thinking up a name for the baby. <laughs> oh, he's already got a name. Sue and I picked one out two years ago. He's called John. John? Yeah, what's the matter with John? Every Tom, Dick, and Harry is called John. <laughs> you want something different. Now, my first kid, we called it Vinegar. Yeah, well, if it looks anything like you, I can see why. <laughs> but I like John. You can remember it. Is uh, Mr. Quaid here? Yeah. Yeah, I'm Buck Quaid. I'm your new radio man. Oh. Well, it's about time you showed up. Now we can celebrate. Come on, Buck. Now, wait a minute, Zerk. I want to get this guy squared away. How long have you been in the Navy, kid? Yeah, you look kind of young. No salt on your gear. I'm 19. I got all my teeth. 
In that tone of voice, how long do you think you're going to keep him? Hey, take it easy, Quade. He'll cry for Mama. And don't pat me on the head. Nineteen is old enough. I can take care of myself. Hey, look, kid. Dry your ears and button your lip if you want to get along in this man's Navy. Easy, Buck. We all had to be 19 well, once. If there's anything I can't stand, it's a lippy kid. Listen, you. I suppose you've been lingering along the way, having yourself a time while I've been doing double duty. See your orders. My, uh, orders? Yes, your orders. Assigning you to this floating sewer pipe. Uh, well, uh, uh, I, I lost him, sir. Oh, you lost him, sir. Well, now, ain't that cute? Now, what's the skipper going to say about that? Oh, but I memorized him. Oh, you memorized him. Nineteen, and he claims to have a memory. <laughs> now, I want to see if you can remember your name. Damon, sir. Radio man, second class. First name. John. Jo John. Did you say John? Yes, sir. Anything wrong with John? Oh, son. Oh, that's the most wonderful name in the whole world. Here. Here, sit down, John. Here. Here, help yourself to... What do we got around here? Hey, here, help yourself to candy. How do you like that? He's feeding them pogey bait. <laughs> What's the matter? You going Asiatic or something? Come on, Buck. Let's see what we can do to Australia. No, no, no. You go ahead, Zerk. I'll, I'll see you later. Where will we meet? I'll just take a look for a gutter with a saloon in back of it. I'll find you. <laughs> <laughs> I thought you was hot to have some fun. Oh, sorry, Zerk. Uh, John here is a, is a new man. He's uh, my responsibility. When I've showed him around, I'll I'll join you and the boys. Okay, okay, I'll see you later. <laughs> Becoming a father sure makes a change in some people. If uh, you want to go, sir. No, I'll, I'll go when I get ready. Sit down, son. Well, if you don't mind my saying so, sir, I think I'm a little too old to be your son. Huh? <laughs> yeah, yeah, I, I guess you're right. But, uh, son, you'll have to excuse me. I, I feel pretty good. Today I'm an old man. I'm a father. Understand? No, sir. Well, look, look. See what it says here? Take a gander at this message. It, it makes me your father. The message? Yeah. See where it says, born to my wife, Sue, a, a beautiful destroyer? You know what his name is, kid? No, sir. I could never guess. John. John? My son, John. <laughs> oh, <laughs> well, then, then you won't turn me in for losing my order? No, no, not if you behave yourself like a lad named John Otto. You know... Someday my son will be in this Navy, and when he is, somebody will have to take charge of him. Uh, when you're a father, you'll understand these things, understand? Yes, sir. Oh, no, you don't. You ain't old enough. Now, look alive, son. You ever, ever done any sub-duty before? Only in training. Good. Then keep your mouth shut and your eyes and ears open, and I'll give you the scoop on your duties. Glad to have you aboard, John. <laughs> Sound. Have you got anything? Nothing, Captain. Not having much luck this trip? No, sir, not much luck. You mean anybody has luck on a submarine? Sure, kid. Why not? We always did before. Cramped quarters, short rations, no sunshine. Oh, no, listen, you got the submarine service all wrong. It's good duty. Extra pay. We, we don't fight storms. While surface craft are being tossed like bottles with everybody seasick, we submerge and wait out the weather. I get a kick out of battle actions on the surface with big guns roaring, the plane zooming towards you, and the ak ak knocking them down like clay pigeons. You ain't been through all that. Well, not exactly, but once in a movie... A I... movie? Oh, so you want excitement. Now, look, we ain't been lucky enough to run into enemy craft so far on this cruise, but when we do, hold your hat, son. Nah, pig boat duty isn't for me. Hit and run instead of standing up and slugging it out. Nothing to be proud of. Oh, no? Hey, listen, kid. Sometime during off hours, such as now, you should ask the skipper to give you a peek at the logbook of the Seawolf. Up until this trip, we had plenty to be proud of. To the Japs, we've been a one-sub flotilla. Yeah? Yeah. We was winning the war single-handed, practically. I don't ever underestimate the Seawolf, son. Even if our luck has gone back on us. Uh-oh. Got something? Yeah. Listen. Check it. Enemy ship? Yeah. Captain... You got something, Con Sound? Enemy ships are using sound equipment. Looking for us, huh? Is it close? Yeah, it's getting closer. That sound man is pretty accurate. Very well. A periscope. What's the matter, kid? Nervous? No. <laughs> well, then stop shaking. Uh, it's a Jap destroyer. A Jap destroyer? Well, that'll be good, Mr. Quaid. If we get it. We always got it before. Yeah, but that was before our luck changed. Uh, she's a Jap, all right. Big destroyer. Nagasaki class. Battle stations... Gee, I, I hope we get this one. This one we gotta get. They'll get us. Torpedo room. Make ready. Tubes forward. 
Still nervous, kid? No, no, I'm not nervous. I'm just a little excited. Oh, so you find our duty exciting. Open outer doors. Forward tubes ready, Captain. Outer doors open. Stand by. Fire one. I'd like to listen, Mr. Quaid. Take that other headset. Stand by to fire two. Fire two. There she goes. Now they're running hot. They... They're missing the target. Down periscope. Mr. Queen. Yes, sir? Did you hear those fish run? Yes, sir. They all ran hot but missed the target. Uh, where's our luck going to? This has got to stop. Captain. Yes, Quaid? There's a, another ship up there. Huh? Propellers or pings? Pings. I think they're on the starboard side. More than one, huh? Yes, sir. I hear two of them. Mercer, take her down fast. Hold your hat, kid. We're going down. Hey. hey wh wh what was that? What do you think? It's a depth charge. They'll be dropping more with our names on them, written in Japanese. <laughs> You know, fellas, I can't understand it. We was the luckiest sub in Pacific waters. Now what gives? You know what, fellas? I think we're jinxed. Jinxed? Hey, you might have something yeah, there. Yeah, that's right. We got a stranger on board. And that's always bad luck. Well, who's the stranger? The kid. I happen to know he came aboard without his papers. What? His no papers? orders? Yeah, and ever since he's been with us, we might as well be shooting our torpedoes up Salt Creek. Yeah. Well, how do you like that? Johnny, the jinx. He'll be the best sub in the fleet. Now all we got to do is sit on the... Yeah, and Quaid always stands up for the kid. Yeah, that's yeah. right. Every Dog, my tough going ever about. since he come aboard. Now, why don't you guys stop beating your gums and save your breath? You may need it before we surface again. Well, hiya, Buck. Where's Sonny Boy? I take it you're referring to the kid? Yeah, oh, Johnny the on? Jinx. You're talking like a man with a paper hat. You've been in the Navy long enough to know what happens when a stranger comes the aboard. The kid ain't a stranger. He's a member of the crew. He come aboard without no orders, remember? Yeah, yeah. yeah. We had good luck till he showed up, too. Four times in the last four days we missed the target. Oh, I suppose the kid swims out and moves the target. We'll wind up on the bottom for keeps. Yeah, with the Japs painting our silhouette on one of their stacks. Easy, easy. They're still telling us. Keep it low. Listen, Buck. Before this, when some downy-faced punk come aboard, you always put him in his place. Even if you had a dentist's face in. Just because his name happens to be John. Look, Zack. And this goes for the rest. If you do anything to that kid, you'll be strangers. You'll have to look at your dog tags to identify yourselves. Oh, yeah. Okay, okay, Quaid. Have it your way. Show sure was too bad the day you became a mother. Why, you... And we'll settle this later. Man your stations. All right, let's go. We're in trouble. <laughs> Why don't you try and get some sleep, sir? We don't need sleep. We need luck. Attention, men. The skipper. Men, we've been lying on the bottom for hours. We're patched up now and should be ready to move out in a few minutes. We've got a good idea there's an enemy ship in this cub with us. And we've only got two torpedoes left. Well, you know how our luck has been running. So if there's a rabbit's foot aboard, I'd like to borrow it. Stand by. Mr. Quaid, do you suppose I'm responsible for the bad luck we're having? Well... Save your breath. The air's getting bad. Hey, Buck, did you hear what the skipper just said about luck? We don't need rabbit's feet. All we got to do is get rid of this... Well, why don't you go back to your sack? Why don't you? Or well, send this punk back to join us. The boys would love to have a nice chat with him. Knock it off. Listen, Buck, if and when we get out of here, we're going back to port to get patched up. And when we leave that port, there ain't going to be a jinx in a boat load. Why, you... Come back here, sir. A jughead. So, I am the jinx. What are you talking about? I may be 19, sir, but I'm not dumb. On a submarine, you hear everything. I've heard them talking. They think it's me that's caused this tough luck. Well, Mr. Man, listen. You got something? Yeah. Yeah, it's a ship. Here, you take over, Mr. Quaid. Nothing doing. You stick to your post. Yeah, but I'm a jinx. Shut up at your job, kid. Very well, sir. Captain. Yes, sound? Captain, I hear screws. They're just beginning to turn. All right, men. We can't lie here forever. We better go up and take a look around. Let's make these last two torpedoes count. Remember, it's them or us. You're listening to Humphrey Bogart as Chief Radio Man Buck Quaid and my son John on the Cavalcade of America, sponsored by the DuPont Company, maker of better things for better living through chemistry. Now for our second act. 
Chief Radio Man Buck Quaid finds his paternal interest in a sailor named John is backfiring. The U.S. submarine Sea Wolf cautiously moves out of hiding, while Quaid and the kid the crew calls Johnny the Jinx sit nervously at the radio controls, stalking a Japanese ship. A periscope. Sound. You still on him? Yes, sir. Getting louder, Captain. Yeah, I see him. Modern ship, fast freighter, poor goal poster. Length about 450 feet. She's probably loaded with troops. This is what we've been looking for. Battle stations. Mr. Quaid, are you still with me? Right with you, kid. We're getting close. The closer the better. This time we can't miss. Yeah, I hope you're right. Now don't worry. I said I was hoping, sir, not worrying. All that means is that you're still 19. Fire one. There she goes. Fire two. Yeah. There's the other one. Do you hear it, Mr. Quaid? Yeah. Hey, hey, wait a minute. What's the matter? Listen. Sound. Do you hear those fish? Yes, sir. How are they going? I... I'm afraid one of them has stopped, sir. Now, there's a wake. It's the second one. It's almost there. You hear it, kid? Yes, sir. It's in there. We can't miss. Hey. Hey, do you hear that? Huh? Something's wrong. No explosion. Hey, that torpedo climbed right up the side of that ship and failed to go off. Let's get out of here. Down periscope. Left. Full rudder. Well, I guess that proves it, Mr. Quaid. I am the jinx. Shut up, kid. Or I'll... Everybody on this sub may think so, but it happens that... I don't. I don't want you to think so either. You're okay. Just stay in there and give them a fight. <laughs> hey, you know, Buck, I never forget a fighting face. The last time you hit Australia, it cost me ten pounds sterling to clean up after you left. <laughs> <laughs> broken glass, broken lights. It's a wonder I'm still in business. Oh, you're still in business because I settled with you, Alvy. You only made about 50% on the deal, too. Ah, no hard feelings, Buck. Only this time, uh, take it easy, will you? You know, with the war on, I just can't replace the equipment. <laughs> uh, what are you going to have, The Buck? best you got. We're drinking a toast. To my son. You'll become a family man? Well, good for you. Hey, kid. What are you doing here? I got an appointment. You got here pretty fast. You must be kind of thirsty, eh? I don't drink. That's a good boy. Well, then what are you doing here? Say. Hey, listen, son. You aren't looking for trouble, are you? Uh, not here, please. I'm in here to do like you said. I'll give him a fight. Zerk and a whole bunch of them. Now, wait a minute. Wait a minute. You got me wrong when I said fight. I didn't mean for you to battle it out. I've tackled like this guy's before. Don't pay off. Well spoken, Buck. I'll let him come. I'm not afraid. That well, sounds a little like movie talk to me, Grade Z. What do you mean? Well, I've seen a lot of fights, kid. But it was only in the movies I ever saw one guy clean up a whole gang of sailors. <laughs> I made the box office give me back my dough. I'll take a chance. If you think I'm going back to sea without an assistant radio man, you've got another guest coming. Well, maybe you won't. Maybe this ship will be shorthanded somewhere else. You seem pretty sure of yourself. You can't change my mind. I'm not your son. Okay. If you were my son, there's only one thing I could do, and it hurts me more than... <laughs> and it hurts you. Buck, uh, what did you do to that guy? Uh, didn't I ask you not to start nothing now, please? Now, take it easy. I won't wreck your place. He's out cold. Here. Here, just help me get his arm around my shoulder. <clears throat> there, that... That's it. Now, come on, son. We're going for a nice, long walk. Three days at sea, kid. You better go back and get some shut-eye. I won't go back there. The guys still think I'm a jinx. They think I'm... I'm yellow. Give me that headset. Why didn't you let me fight him? We've been at sea for three days and we're still jinxed. It must be me. Oh, you're as nutty as they are. Now listen, son. Look... From now on, will you stop calling me son? Sit down before I smack you again. If I thought my kid was going to turn out like you, I'd have let him do all his sailing in a bathtub. Hey, listen. Did you hear something? Yeah. Yeah, here, Mr. Quaid, you take over. I'm not going to jinx this one. Stay there. No, no, I can't. I'm afraid. Call the captain. You hear me? Please, sir, I just can't. Call the captain now. Captain. Did you call sound? Yes, sir. I hear pings on the port side. Now we'll take a look. And captain. Yes, now I hear two screws. Two sets of them. The second ship is dead ahead. Okay. Captain, there's more. Third. 
we running into the whole darn fleet? A periscope. Mr. Quaid, are you listening? Yeah, on the other headset. Keep it up, kid. Am I right? Sure you're right. Why are you asking me? Captain. Captain, there's a fourth coming in. Wow. Four cruisers in line to bombard the island. I see a command pennant. The admiral of this outfit aboard the first cruiser. Battle stations. Mark bearings. First cruiser. Mark. Three, three, nine. Second cruiser. Mark. Three, four, two. Third cruiser. Mark. Three, four, seven. Fire one. Fire two. Fire three. Sound. Can you hear those torpedoes? Yes, sir. They're running hot. Follow them. You don't need to follow that one, kid. It got there. And again. Number three. Set them up in the other alley. Did you hear that sound? Yes, sir. The first one is sinking fast. I think it's the Admiral. There goes number two. And here goes number three. All right. Keep your ear on them all the way down. Listen, kid. There's number three. Listen to the death rattle of a ship. You hear that? Huh? That's her ammunition exploding. The cold water has reached a boiler. Did you hear them blow up? There. That's the screws stopping. Listen to the rest of it. That's the ship's pipes breaking up. That's a plate buckling. Oh, you can almost see them twisting off. Good work, boys. Let's get out of here. Is that all? That's all. For a jinx, you've done a darn good job, John. <laughs> Uh, right. Here they come, Quaid and that jinx of ours, right into the saloon. <laughs> so shall we give them the work? Give them the work. <laughs> well, well, come in, gentlemen, come in. Now, now, no trouble now, boys, please. All right, you guys, we're here, so how's it going to be? A fair match, one at a time, or are you figuring on a free-for-all? I'll call the shore patrol. Shore patrol! All right, son, speak a piece. Well, I don't care whether you guys want to call me a jinx or not. That's up to you. But if there's anybody here thinks I'm yellow, speak up. Do you know what I think of you? All right, Zerk. I'm not afraid of you either. Listen, you knuckleheads. The lad who points the way to the killing of three Jap cruisers is the kind of a jinx we ought to carry all the time. But if you guys want trouble, Johnny and I are ready for you. We'll settle it right now. Hey, now, wait a minute. This ain't fair. You guys have got us outnumbered. Two to eight. <laughs> <laughs> all right, knock it off. Knock it off. I'll have you laugh down on the other side of your chop. Hey, look, Buck, it's a gag, all in fun. Joke, J-O-K-E. This is just huh? a little party to wash away the jigs. Look, Johnny, will you shake? Huh? You mean... Come on, shake. I'll go ahead and shake, son. They mean it. Of course we mean it. Three cruises in one day, that's a record. You're one of us, kid. Shake, mate. Yeah. Oh, gee whiz. Well, thanks a lot, fellas. Hey, Alfie. Alfie. Yeah, okay. Come on here. Come here. Set him up all around with a double jigger of soda pop for Johnny. Soda pop? Sure. <laughs> we'll have a toast to Johnny and to that little destroyer back home in the States. <laughs> Here's the motor. I'm not much at writing letters, Mrs. Damon, so I'll close saying I'm... Glad you, your son John, got back to his home base all right. He's a fine boy. Please excuse me for getting personal at this point, but I'm enclosing a few Kodak pictures of my kid. You'll notice that when I got back the news that the kid was born, I made a slight mistake. When I got home, my son John turned out to be uh, <laughs> Johanna. <laughs> Star Humphrey Bogart will return to our cavalcade microphones in a moment. Now, here is Gaines Whitman. Somebody found it on the beach, just above the high water mark where a breaker had tossed it. 
It was a candy bar that had floated ashore. A Ration D candy bar supplied to American troops. Nobody will ever know just how it got there, whether it was lost when a ship went down or happened to fall overboard. Nobody knows just how long it was in the water either, perhaps months, perhaps a year. But that candy bar has an honored place in a collection of outstanding performance records of DuPont materials in the war. For the inner wrapping of the box that contained it is of DuPont cellophane. And after its long exposure to salt water and sunshine, the candy is still good. Until the last day of the war, most of the cellophane the DuPont company could make was needed by the Army and Navy. The protection job done by cellophane during the war was measured in square miles of shimmering, tough film. Food, metal parts, guns, and a thousand other things were protected either by cellophane alone or by cellophane laminated with papers and other materials. On a huge scale, the war was a demonstration that for many protection jobs, nothing was so well suited as this sparkling, transparent film. Now, so rapidly is reconversion moving ahead, cellophane is already back again on many peacetime products. More and more cigarettes are again being kept fresh in cellophane-covered packages. Baked goods, too. Delicious as when they came out of the oven, thanks to this thin, clear, moisture-proof film that keeps them fresh. Not to mention the many other products you used to buy in cellophane before the war. Cellophane has come a long way in the last 25 years. As DuPont technical and manufacturing skill has brought the prices lower and lower, this has encouraged more and more manufacturers to package their products in it. Getting along without cellophane during the war demonstrated to many people how thoroughly they had come to rely on it. For cellophane is the wrapping material which shows what it protects. Today and in the future, whether they are buying tomatoes or nylon stockings, candy or cigars, more and more people will buy products that smile a friendly greeting through transparent, protective cellophane, one of the DuPont Company's better things for better living through chemistry. And now, here is tonight's star, Humphrey Bogart. Next week, Cavalcade has a date for you with the charming Claire Trevor, who, as Emily Roebling, will tell you a story of her father and her husband. She'll tell you how one of America's great bridges was built and how, in the tradition, the bridge demanded a life. It's a strange story, but Emily Roebling, a woman, had as much to do with the building of that bridge as did any of the engineers or workmen. Yes, a strange story, but true. As we will hear next Monday night in The Builders of the Bridge starring Claire Trevor on the DuPont Cavalcade of America. Humphrey Bogart has recently completed the Warner Brothers production, The Big Sleep. Alan Reed played the part of Zerk, and Jerry Hausner was Johnny. The music for tonight's DuPont Cavalcade was composed and conducted by Robert Armbruster. Our cavalcade play was written by Philip Lewis and was based on the book USS Seawolf by Daryl Frank and James T. Horan with J.M. Eckberg. This is Tom Collins inviting you to listen next week to Claire Trevor in The Builders of the Bridge on the Cavalcade of America, brought to you by the DuPont Company of Wilmington, Delaware. This is the National Broadcasting Company. This is the National Broadcasting Company.